Saturday night on the west side of the Windy City. There is adrenaline in the air as we anticipate an electric evening of boxing. Born and raised in Poland, Andrew Fonfara has lived and trained in the city of Chicago for the past 10 years. He will have the crowd in his corner tonight as he gets set to square off against Joe Smith Jr. in a light heavyweight matchup. Inside UIC Pavilion here on the campus of the University of Illinois at Chicago and welcome to premier boxing champions on NBC. Good evening everyone. I'm Liam McHugh. This crowd gearing up for three intense encounters in our headliner. It's local favorite Fonfara against Smith Jr. A heavy underdog who has heavy hands. 17 of his 21 wins have come by way of knockout. We're also going to get a good look at one of the most dynamic young fighters in the sport as 20-year-old Erickson Lubin puts his undefeated record on the line against Daniel Sandoval. And in the house to help us break it all down is the man considered the next big thing in the sport, welterweight contender Errol Spence Jr. This was the scene earlier tonight as he greeted his 2012 Olympic teammate Rasheed Warren. And in mere moments, Warren will be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with bantamweight title holder Juan Carlos Payano. A look at the Corona tail. The tape shows us that Payano is the older fighter. Payano is the taller fighter. And Payano is the man responsible for the lone blemish on Rasheed Warren's record. It came back in August in a split decision that was tight and somewhat controversial. Tonight, they do it again. It's the much anticipated rematch. Payano and Warren, let's go to arena announcer Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the UIC Pavilion here in Chicago, Illinois, live on NBC. This is Premier Boxing Champions. The action begins with 12 rounds for the Bantamweight Championship. Introducing first fighting out of the red corner, wearing the orange and the black. His professional record, 13 wins for those coming by way of knockout against one loss. Fighting out of Cincinnati, Ohio. He is the three-time United States Olympian and the challenger, Rasheed Baby Pitt Warren. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black with the leopard print. As a professional, undefeated, 17 bouts, 17 victories, including eight wins coming by way of KO. Fighting out of Miami, Florida. A two-time Olympian and the reigning bantamweight champion, Juan Carlos Payano. And in charge, Celestino Ruiz. Warren Ayaso. Right here is good. Right here is good. Anything below that? It's a low blow. You guys receive your instruction in the dressing room. Decidive tu sustione en el camerino. Yo no pelea libre y protege tu tiempo. You receive your instruction in the dressing room. Protect yourself at all times. God bless. Good job. There's a buzz in the building that comes with nervous energy. The action's about to start. The men calling it Marv Albert and BJ Flores. Guys. All right, thank you very much, uh, Liam. Bantamweight title holder Juan Carlos Payano in the black and gold trunks facing Rasheed Warren in the orange and black tiger stripes. A rematch of that fight that took place last August the 2nd, a bizarre disputed split decision that had knockdowns and rapid punches, you name it, BJ. <laughs> And uh, these guys were flying all over the ring. Yeah, a lot of action in the first fight, Marv. A good fight, a very close fight, and uh, you know that's why we're seeing this rematch today. Nice right hook by Warren right out the gate. And it's a matchup of southpaws, which is unusual. How about the Tiger Stripes, which I would think have something to do with the fact that Warren is from 
Cincinnati, and it's the colors of the Cincinnati Bengals. I absolutely love it, Marvin. He talked a lot yesterday on the, in the fighter meetings. It's very important to bring that belt back to a city of Cincinnati. He's got a lot of pride uh, from where he's from, and he's looking forward to this fight, and, uh, you know, the colors are great. Nice right hook by Warren to start this round. You see the tempo of Rashi. He's very fast-handed, three-time Olympian, so he knows how to get out of the gate for a house and start. And he doubled and tripled up on that right hand. Roundhouse miss by Payano. You see Rashi's a counter puncher. He started this round aggressive, Mark, but he likes to sit back on that back foot, make his opponent miss, and make him pay. Payano, 32 years old, out of La Vega in the Dominican Republic, the youngest of eight children, growing up in poverty in the Dominican, 17-0, eight by knockout. Beautiful head movement by Rashid Warren. You know, he's got some physical gifts that allow him to get away with things that most fighters shouldn't be able to get away with. He, he leans straight back there, but he's got such good head movement and reflexes, he uh, made his opponent miss every shot. Nice right hook. Warren, 29 years old, 13 and 1, only four by knockout. And as Liam mentioned a moment ago, he's the he's a three-time boxing Olympian, the only three-time Olympian in the history of the Olympic Games, 2004, 2008, 2012. But he lost the first fight in all three Olympics, two of those losses by a single point. Yeah, I was able to call his fight in 2012 uh, when he was in London. I saw that fight. He fought a very tough opponent in his first match. And, uh, you know, the amateurs... Sometimes that's how it goes, but as a pro, he's got a nice pro style, especially at Bantamweight. He's got that fast hand speed, and uh, he's doing really well in this first round, Marvin. I should say the only three-time U.S. Right. Olympian. I believe there's a couple others from Cuba. <laughs> Good first round by Warren. Well, BJ, as we uh, touched on earlier in that first meeting between these two, it, it was just a, a, a wild fight right throughout, a fight that had a little bit of everything. Yeah, it did. You know, a really exciting fight, Marvin. Both guys had their moments. Payano gave a lot of good stuff. Warren came back, knocked Payano down at the end of the fight. A lot of good, uh, good work by Payano and Warren. But, you know, throughout the fight, it was a foul-filled fight. There was a lot of low blows. A lot of intentional points deducted. Two-point deduction there from Warren for pushing his opponent down and hitting him while he was down. Came back later, knocks Piano down here. You see a little acrobatics from uh, from the champion and uh, Bruce Lee moves there. <laughs> because both guys have their moments, Marvin. The you know the second fight's going to be even better. And Piano did win it by split decision. See in round three, that point deducted, punch to the back of the head. Uh, Two more points deducted in the ninth round, and Warren able to bounce back to score that knockdown you just saw in the 12th. It is round two, scheduled for 12. You're watching Premier Boxing Champions on, on NBC. We're on the campus of the University of Illinois at Chicago, UIC. DJ, the most notable fight here in this arena back in July of 1986, Hall of Famer Pepino Cuevas with his final fight in the United States, a third round knockout over Luis Mateo. Very good fighter, Pepino Cuevas. You know, Marv, I love the fact that you, you remember those kind of uh, fun filled tidbits uh, about what's happened here in Chicago. Now, that's our crack research team. Please. <laughs> I'd like to take the credit. Left hand by Piano. But you mentioned earlier that you saw one of the favorite Cuevas fights. You actually got to cover those. I did. It was a Duran Cuevas fight uh, that took place at the old uh, sports arena in L.A. on Super Bowl Eve many years ago. Rashid's doing some good work here in round two. It's, you can tell how this fight's going to play out. You know, Rashid's going to win the early rounds. Uh, is he going to be able to hold off Piano down the stretch? And he needs to 
maintain his distance and maintain the respect of Piano by using those taunts and those feints and touching him on the outside. Don't let Piano just walk right in without any punishment. You can see both guys very calm right now, just kind of looking for opportunities. Rashid, a naturally faster hand, so it makes it uh, you know, easier for him to score points in these early rounds. But when you get into six, seven, eight, and nine, Piano's going to have to step on the gas. Just under a minute left, it is round two scheduled for 12. An uppercut landed by Payano. And Rashi landed. You saw him lean back on that leg. And he shot a nice left uppercut when Payano was kind of overextended. Caught him with a nice punch. Good counter puncher, Rashi Warren. Nice jab to the body by Payano. Comes right back down to it again. And that could be key to help him to set up that left hand of the head. Warren, very slick. Good body puncher. Lex Power, though, I mentioned the record, 13 and 1, only four knockouts, 28 straight fights without, without a KO. Nice left hand. And that'll do it for round two. Premier Boxing Champions on NBC is brought to you by Corona, who invites you to find your beach. By Applebee's new wood fire grills, and by Motel 6, we'll leave the light on for you. Welcome back to Chicago. People in this city, really all over the world, still mourning the passing of Muhammad Ali. He left us on June 3rd at age 74, as you saw from those photos right there. The three-time heavyweight champ had a special relationship with this town. Started back in 59 when he won the National Golden Gloves here. Golden Gloves here, obviously, continued for the next few decades as he lived here for about a dozen years in the 60s and the 70s. Send it back to you, Mark. The greatest Muhammad Ali. Last week's memorial service in Louisville, such a powerful and emotional event that, that I'll never forget. Yeah, I love seeing, uh, you know, all the people that came out to support and celebrate the life of Muhammad Ali. I remember when I was a kid, I used to re-watch all of his videos of all of his fights, the Sonny Liston, George Foreman, Ali, uh, Frazier, his pro debut with Tony Huntsker. Just, uh, I absolutely loved Ali and uh, very sad. But what an amazing life. Uh, let's check it with Kenny Rice in the corner of Rashid Warren. All right, thanks, Marv. Mike Stafford, trainer. What do you think so far? Well, Rashid's doing a good job boxing, but I want him to jab more, back him up with the double jab, and throw that left hand right over his right shoulder. You see what I'm saying? He, you know what I'm saying? Piano, piano dropping his. And when he drop it, when he jab, he, he dropping down. So we got, we got. When he throw that left hand, we got to throw that, throw that left hand right over his right shoulder. Okay. He That's said yesterday that he wanted to come out and be aggressive. Is he yeah. doing all that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He he boxing, though. You know what I'm saying? He, he, you know what I'm saying? We th keeping our space before, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, Panel want to wanna wrestle. Right? Get inside and bang him up. We stand on the outside and boxing. All right. Thanks, Mike. Marv. All right. All right, Ken. Now, Mike Stafford also trained Adrian Broder, another Cincinnati product. She's saying that... Uh, Mike is a father figure to him. Coming up on a minute remaining in round three. See Piano trying to get on the inside, Mark. He's got to get close to Warren because he can't touch him, uh, you know, from the outside with the, with the hand speed of Warren. So if he could continue to use that jab to the body, go up, go down with it, he could set up that left hand to get him inside. But when he gets there, he's got to stay in, uh, in, in work rushing. If you look at the eyes of Rashi, he's very sharp. He's looking for everything Piano does, looking for opportunities to counter, make him pay, and uh, you know, stay in control of this fight, which is exactly what he's done through the first three rounds, Mark. Warren getting a right hand into the chin. That 
will do it for round three. Welcome back to Chicago as we continue our coverage of the PBC on NBC. Liam McHugh here with Errol Spence Jr., the undefeated welterweight contender. You're an Olympic teammate of Rasheed Warren in 2012. You know him well. He said he was looking to take tonight out of the judges' hands. What do you think so far of his performance? Um, he's fighting smart. I was a little worried about that. I thought he was going to come in there and make it a dog fight. But he's fighting smart. He's out boxing him, counter punching, using his speed and quickness. And I'm like what I'm seeing so far. All right. Well, plenty more from Arrow throughout the evening. Right now, though, let's go back to Marvin BJ. Finally, it will be. Hearing from Arrow from ringside uh, later on tonight. On to round four, our unofficial score. Watching round of Eric Raskin has uh, two rounds for Lauren and uh, one for Payano. You see Rashi Warren come out in this, uh, in this fourth round, very aggressive. Some taunts, some feints, trying to put Payano off balance. Connected with a nice right hook there, Mark. Warren able to turn Piano around, almost caught him up against the ropes. He's confusing Piano, Marv. He's switching it up. He was counter punching off his back foot last round. This round, he comes right out, taunts him, feints him, jumped in with the lead right hook, and uh, he startled the Piano a little bit. We talked about this yesterday in the fighter meetings. Piano's got to back Rashi Warren up if he wants to be successful in this fight. And uh, Warren did a great job at the start of this round. Most of this round taking place in the center of the ring. Nice right hook by Piano a second ago, Marty. Caught him. See the cat-like reflexes of Warren when he tries to step back. He's very quick to unload with those two counter shots, Marvin. Uh, Piano's still getting used to the speed. That was a slip. The referee, Celestino Ruiz, out of Chicago. I'm certain that both boxers understood that. Mike Stafford in the corner of Rashi Warren, screaming for him to use the jab. Mike wants him to use that jab to set up his combination. This is going to make it a lot easier, uh, you know, for Rashi once he starts getting that punch going. But sometimes when you're in there, you just want to land the power punches. <laughs> Good body shot. Body shot landed by Payano. He is the Bantamweight title holder off that disputed split decision. And they're meeting back last August. Which has set up this rematch. He's a very good fighter, Marv. He's a two time Olympian, a huge amateur pedigree, um, almost 500 amateur fights. But you know, like I said, like we talked about yesterday, he's got to get to the body of Rashi Warren. Nice left hand to slow him down for those later rounds. Finish to the round at a late punch. And it is on to round five. Rashi Warren and the orange and black and Juan Carlos Payano. And the black with gold. Here's the Eric Raskin of unofficial scorecard brought to you by Mobile Strike. Eric? Three, four rounds, Marv. Warren is boxing beautifully. I've got him up three rounds to one. I did give the third to Payano because Warren let, let himself get out hustled that round. Payano was making the fight more, but as long as Warren's letting his hands go, he's scoring the cleaner shots and winning these rounds. I've got him up 39 37. I think it's very possible you could be up three rounds to one, even four rounds to zero, possibly. I think he's uh, he's done a lot of good work. But Piano is a champion, so, uh, you know, there's a, there's also a chance that some of those close rounds Mark, might go to him. But Warren's boxing very well right now. Warren's been the crowd favorite here right from the, the announcements on the public address by Ray Flores. I mean, this is a world, this is a, a, a lifelong dream for him. You know, he's been in three Olympics. He's been multiple-time national champion when he's an amateur. His first good for a world title, he fell a little short, so all of his family wants to be part of it, and uh, we see them in the crowd tonight, Mark. Stafford.
Stafford still screaming for Warren to use that jab. Keep that distance. Punished by on his way in. And you can hear Mike Stafford screaming from his corner. Use that jab. Barry Hunter and Mike Stafford both yelling, yelling over there. Barry Hunter, the coach of uh, Lamar Peterson. But he did a lot of work with Adrian when, uh, when he was growing up. You see Piano still kind of measured. He's trying to work his way inside, but he's very cautious of the counterpunching ability of Rashid Warren. So he's a little hesitant. It's costing him right now, but he's getting closer. Nice right jab by Piano. We've seen very few clinches to this point. A couple right here in round five. Right hand by Warren landed. And you can see the round. Piano's working. He's, he's doing more than Warren almost the entire round. But Warren's a much cleaner puncher. And the action is picked up. Piano has come on here in the fifth. Nice work rate for Piano this round. Man, some good shots. Piano with a series of, of combinations. Stop, 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 stop. Hey, you gotta stop holding him like that. Okay. BJ, you mentioned Rashi Warren's family on hand. There's Rashi's mom, Paulette. On to realm six here in Chicago. She won the first member of the 2012 U.S. Olympic class to fight for a professional world title. The title holder is Juan Carlos Payano. Rashid Warren hurt Payano with a punch a second ago, Marvin, that corner. Caught him with a good shot, spun out, hit him with another hard uppercut. Definitely got the attention of Payano. Payano been warned for, for the hold behind the head. And I like when Warren starts these rounds at a fast tempo because he kind of sets the sets the pace up for the rest of the round. He's showing Piano in the very beginning, hey, I'm not going to let you walk me down. I'm going to hit you with something sharp and let you know I can hurt you also. Now, DJ, this is a relatively clean fight compared to what took place last August when these two met. It's still early. <laughs> and the conditioning is going to be also, you know, a, a very key point for Rashid Warren. If he's able to continue at this pace and continue to box in the later rounds without clinching on the inside, he's going to continue to be successful. Piano's got to find ways to take away that boxing ability of Rashi Warren. Hit him downstairs, hit him low, downstairs under the body, and uh, just stay aggressive and stay on him the whole three minutes of each round. Piano measuring Warren. Not able to reach him. But you see that head movement he's got, Marv is kind of moving back and forth. That's enough just to freeze Rashi a little bit. If you've got a sitting target, Rashi will let his hands go all day. But that upper body movement by Piano makes it a little more difficult. Piano coming off an aggressive round five. Warren right back with that left hand. Nice, beautiful counter right hook by Warren. You see he's got those reflexes. And then you see the counter left hand on the other side. He's just a, a very gifted fighter. Got to be careful not to pull straight out with those hands down, though, because Piano's falling over combinations. He's eventually going to catch him. First three, four, five rounds, you're a little sharper, a little faster. Later in the fight, you get caught with shots pulling straight back. Now that's the case with Rashid Warren, who did come out very fast. I don't know if Piano had any illusions that he was going to win all the early rounds. I think he wanted just to get in there and keep it competitive, keep it close, learn some of the tendency of Rashi and, and get him down the stretch. Final seconds, round six. All right, on to round seven. Let's check it with Kenny Rice. Uh, we'll get to Kenny in just a moment. Good round for Piano in round six, Marv. He did a lot of, uh, you know, 
effective punching. He did a lot of good body shots and landed some nice shots up top. Rashi also did some good work as well with that counter left hand and that right hook. Now let's go to Kenny Rice in the corner of Juan Carlos. Ayana. Thanks, Marv. Herman Cassano getting just a few more instructions in there, so we waited for that. Herman, how's this fight going so far? Um, it's a very close fight. We're probably down around. Um, you know, he's got to throw. He's, he's fighting more Rashid's fight right now. Um, the pace, you know. Uh, so I, I want him to just be a little busier. Make Rashid fight his pace and his fight. Um, you know, use his jab just a little bit more. But, you know, again, it's, uh, it's a 12-round fight, so we still got uh, some rounds to play out. You think your guy's behind right now? Is this a time of urgency? Yeah, this next round for sure, it's, it's a time to step it up and, and start uh, making sure we, we win the late rounds and, 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 and take Rashi in a little bit deeper water and make him, you know, make him earn it. All right, thanks, Herman. Marv? Objective thoughts from the trainer, Herman. Kaiseta, Eric Raskin, our unofficial scorer, has Warren in front five rounds to one. It's very possible, and I agree with what Herman said, Mark. You know, he's, he gave a real analysis of what's going on in the fight. Hey, my fighter's down. we got to pick it up in the next few rounds, and uh, he was telling him in the corner, you got to touch him when you get close. I don't care where, the arms, the shoulders, the body. Just make sure and touch him so we can get him down the stretch. It's a low blow thrown by, by Warren. Referee Celestina Rui was screened out. Both fighters had enough of those in the last fight to last for 10 more fights, so hopefully we won't see too much more of that. Warren getting off to the fast start over the early rounds. It is a matchup of Southpaws with Piano defending his Bantamweight title. Because it's a matchup of Southpaws, Marv, Warren's been able to counter effectively with that straight left hand whenever Piano shoots that long, slow jab. He's able to slip right back and hit him with that short left hand, and, uh, you know, he's had a lot of success with that punch. Left hand right there by Piano, reaching for Warren. It's an example of Warren pulling straight back with his hands down, Mark. Can't do that. Got to get your head off to the side. Piano can easily get back in this fight if he'll just start letting his hands go on the inside and really touching the body and the arms of Rashi Warren. Good combination by Warren. And a good finish to the round. Some really good work by Rashi Warren in that last round. We look in the replay here. You see this beautiful counter-punching ability. Leaning back, hitting him with a straight left hand, and then a three-punch combination immediately after. Piano returns the favor with a, no a nice, long, straight left hand when Warren is backing down with his hands down. We are in Chicago on the campus of the University of Illinois at Chicago as we move to round number eight. Barb Albert, B.J. Flores, Kenny Rice, William McHugh. And our unofficial scorer, Eric Raskin, will also be joined later on by welterweight contender and Olympian, Errol The Truth Spence. See Rashi just lead forward with that right hook. Strong punch by Rashi. And you see Piano continuing to pick up the level of aggression, Marv. He's really trying to get closer to Rashi now. Got to remember to use his jab on the way in, though. Don't just try to walk in, because it makes it easy for uh, Rashi to tee off on him. You see more confidence on the part of Fagano. He is chasing Warren. And as trainer Herman Cassetta mentioned to Kenny Rice, they feel that Warren can be worn down over this. It's a long fight, 12 rounds. I agree, Mark. I think he can, too. I think the, the temperament of Warren is to start fast and, you know, hopefully hold this guy off. But uh, the temperament of Piano is opposite. He's kind of a slow starter, but once he gets going, he's very, uh, he's very difficult. She total punches. Through seven and change. 30% landed by Warren, who's just 18%. But Piano has thrown 495 considerable margin. And Warren's fought in spurts more, Mark. When he's punched, he's punched, but he's taking little 30-second breaks here and there. But, uh, you know, the, the punch has been effective, but Piano has been kind of constant and aggressive the entire time. Now, oh, up on his toes.
And if Warren wants to slow down the attack of Piano, he's got to counter him after Piano misses. You can't just let him miss and just continue to walk forward without anything in return. You got to touch him with something and say, hey, I'm going to keep you honest. Piano has appeared as if he is getting stronger as this fight has progressed. You know, these are the rounds that the corner of Piano said, hey, we're going to take him down the stretch. Uh, we're going to take him into deep waters. We're going to make him uh, fight the entire 12 rounds. So Piano's really got to focus and uh, generate some offense in these, in these next few rounds. Warren has not thrown much here in the safe round. You know, maybe he's taking a round as a breather, taking a little time off to, you know, kind of regroup and uh, refresh the arms a little bit. But Piano definitely taking advantage of it more. Continues to add to that punch total. It's a strong round for Juan Carlos Payano. We're in the Windy City, the most recent boxing card here on the campus of the University of Illinois at Chicago was October of 2015, headlined by Andrew Fafara. Light heavyweight contender. We will see him later tonight. That was an action-packed unanimous decision victory over Nathan Cleverly. Far throwing 1,400 punches. Now, Warren, we're going to turn things here in the ninth round after taking off the eighth. That looks like that's exactly what he did. He uh, came out in the start of this round much more assertive and looking to land some you know good clean punches against Piano and I think he needs to don't let the control of this fight go to Piano's favor it's only one round Mar but you know sometimes that's all it takes to get a fighter going Piano the bantamweight title holder and the black and gold trunks or she won in the orange and black the tiger stripes a rematch of their fight that took place last August the 2nd with that bizarre disputed split decision. And that loss for Warren, his first as a pro. See Piano measuring Warren. A lot of low combinations. Nice left uppercut by Piano. You see, he took advantage of Rashi Warren, put both of his hands up and uh, kind of handcuffed himself and hit him with the perfect punch. Nice left hand. Warren back with that right hand. And that goes to the body. It was a nice counter left hand by Warren a second ago off the rope smart, but he's got to be more active. Piano's not working him now. Combination by Piano and continues. Left hook lands. And you're sensing a bit of a momentum shift over the last few rounds. He's a uh, nice left uppercut again by Piano. And you see him really starting to get comfortable in there and find his range. It's been all Piano the last couple of rounds. And I think Rashi Warren starting to gas out a little bit. You can tell in the clinches now, he's not able to rip those shots like he was earlier. Piano's out of control. Once again, an effective round for Piano. So next weekend, it's the big time battle between welterweight champ Keith Thurman and Sean Porter. You got to believe Errol Spence Jr. will be paying close attention to that one. We'll be back in action that night on NBCSN with Justin Loesch against 2012 Olympian Junior Castillo. And a reminder, our coverage tonight continues at 11 Eastern over on NBCSN. As to the right here right now, it's round 10. Let's go back to Marvin BJ. All right, thank you, Liam. Well, a good start by Rasheed Warren. 29-year-old out of Cincinnati, Ohio, and Juan Carlos Piano, who is the Bantamweight title holder, has come on the last two or three rounds. 
Nice combination by uh, Rashi Warren a second ago. He shot a 1-2-1. One, one. You know what happens is every time when a fighter shoots a 1-2, you expect a hook, but he came back with another straight punch, and it was a good idea by Rashi Warren. Snapped the head back of Piano. And opportunities like that when Rashi makes Piano miss, he's got to make him pay, Marv, especially in these last three rounds to really see the deal. I think the fight's probably pretty close on the scorecards now. The Piano's had a little leverage in the last uh, last couple couple strong rounds by Piano. And on the subject of scorecards, let's uh, check in with our unofficial score. And we don't mean that in a uh, demeaning way. <laughs> Thanks. To us, he's official, but here's Eric Raskin. How do you see it? Well, I agree with BJ that Piano is coming on these last couple of rounds. I gave both eight and nine to Piano. A lot of these middle rounds, it's been the classic scorer's conundrum of do you favor clean punching or aggression? Warren, I thought, took five, six, seven with the clean punching, but now Piano's aggression is paying off, and can Warren hold him off these last three rounds? It'll be interesting to see. All right, Eric, it has been a conundrum to us also. Coming up on a minute remaining in this 10th round. And you got to remember, Mark Piano's a champion, so you got to really go out there and beat the champion. So, uh, you know, I'm not comfortable with Rashi laying back in these last three rounds. I think he really needs to, uh, you know, suck it up a round or two and really put an exclamation mark on it. Good performance by both guys so far, but you see how the game plan of Piano is starting to, uh, you know, really take over in this fight. Piano won the Bantamweight title, three fights back, sixth round technical decision over Anselmo Moreno in September of 2014. Moreno had been a long reigning champion. Nice lead right hook by Piano. Not a whole lot on it, but just changing the angles of where the punches are coming from, and it's uh, it's frustrating one. Piano, tell Piano telling us yesterday he was looking to keep his distance tonight but uh she wanted was able to get to him early and now these last three or four rounds piano has been able to take charge good right hook by piano second go another good round in the bank for piano A look at Rasheed Warren, the 29-year-old out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Let's go to Kenny Rice with Rasheed's mom, Paulette. All right, thank you, Marv. Yesterday, Rasheed told us in his three Olympics, he regretted he didn't get a gold medal to give to his mom. He's hoping to get a world belt tonight to give to her. Paulette, what do you think about your son's chances of getting that belt? Oh, I think he's going to get it, without no doubt. That's a proud mom speaking? Oh, yes. He's going to get that belt. I know he's worked hard for it. Yes, he's going to get both of them. I have no doubt in my mind. Well, thank you, Paulette. Well, Marv, we know if there was one judge over here tonight, who would be winning this fight? All right, Kenny, it's on to round 11. Nice right hook by Rashi Ward. He hurt Piano a second ago, Kenny. Oh, he caught him with a combination to the head. One coming out strong. He's got him hurt, Marv. He's got to give himself a little space to punch. Don't smother it. The back, the back, the back, the back, An aggressive start to round 11 for Rashi Ward. You see how he's crowding himself a bit too much? He's got to take that little half step back to create room to, to get those punches off. Piano's doing a veteran move to tie him up. He's still hurt, Marv. You can see the legs of Piano. He's still hurt. Turn around, turn around. Come on, guys. And now you see Rashid trying to walk in and just land the big punch. Piano's still hurt. You can see it. His legs still aren't completely there. Rashid's got to take advantage of this moment. Let him go, let him go, let him go. Stop. Step back, step back, step back. Piano buying some time. Trying to tie up Warren. Nice left hand by Piano and Rashi just let like almost 25 seconds go without trying to finish him off and it's just uh, it's, it's really confusing, you know, he had a moment to, to really give himself a strong round and just let Piano out of the situation. I don't know if Warren was a little arm weary or what, what the problem was, but he, he sure didn't want to punch when he got him in trouble. 
but a low blow by Warren. Good shot to the body by Warren. You see blood off the right eye now of uh, Piano. See if it's uh, affecting his vision at all. I can't tell where it's at, Mark. That was the result of a combination early in this 11th round. But Rashi's showing that he's got the power to hurt his opponent, and uh, you know it's very valuable to do that in the 11th round. Good body work. And Rashi Warren has come back with a strong 11th round. Led by his mouth, Paulette, the crowd cheering for Rashi Warren. Let's uh, take a quarter look and brought to you by Applebee's. Close, we got to have these last two rounds. Close, Mike man. Down. Work the whole time. Work the whole time. The rest of my son. Hey. Tonight we got to become world champ. Let's go. And I love in the replay in the last round. We take a look here at some of the good work Rashi Warren did. He hit him with a nice straight left hand and really went to finish him against the ropes. There landed nice combinations, but then later in the round gave Piano a chance to uh, kind of get back into the fight. Didn't fully capitalize on it, but a great round for Rashi Warren. Possibly a 10-8 round, Marv. He really punished in that round. Our unofficial scorer, Eric Raskin, had it a 10-9 round, but he has Warren in front. Seven rounds to four. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Twelfth and final see. round for the Banner White title, which is held by Juan Carlos Piano. And Warren opens up with that combination. So Warren after Basically taking off a couple of rounds has come on strong these last two. Maybe he was just carrying out his game plan. Take a couple rounds off and, and close the fight strong. Because that's exactly what he did in that 11th round. His trainer Barry Hunter called for it. He said, hey, tomorrow we rest, but tonight we got to get this championship. So we got to do something spectacular in these last two rounds. Rushy, listen. And as you mentioned, Warren did hurt Payano. You could see it in the legs last round. Hurt him, cut him up, and really took a lot of the steam off the punches of Piano. You know, getting hurt like that, you know, it's not like when you recover it, you're just fully 100% back. It took, uh, it took some of the stamina out of Piano, it took some of the snap out of his punches. And neither of these fighters are what you would label knockout punchers. Piano 17 0, 8 by knockout, and War at 13 and 1, only four knockouts. It's very difficult. You got to remember their bantam weight. So at that weight division, there's normally not a lot of knockouts. You know, both guys are decent punchers. Nothing spectacular, but you know, both guys are solid. But Warren's been the one tonight who, to show that he can hurt Piano. And I thought it would be the other way around. Oh, it's a slip! It's a slip! It's a slip! That's a slip, as you can hear, Celestino Ruiz. Time out! 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 Let me get a towel. Let me get a towel. The wet spot on the canvas. Stay right there. And it's funny, even a 20-second rest like this can really help and affect both fighters when you're arm weary. So I think it's going to affect Rashi Warren more because when he's got some stamina in those arms, he lets those combinations go, and it's trouble for Piano. Approaching one minute remaining. 12th and final round. Warren right back to the combination. Another combination to the body of Piano. And coming out of that 25 second rest, that's exactly who he saw. Rush, he won unloaded. Give him 20 seconds to recharge, get those lactic acids out of his arms, and uh, he's firing again. And you can see Warren feeling very good about himself. Final minute of the bout. And he's done enough to win tonight, Mark. He, uh, you know, started off very strong. He gave away a couple middle rounds, but he's uh, winning these championship rounds like a champion should do. So you got to give him full respect, and he's really fought a much better fight than he did in the first fight. And a big mouse under the right eye of Piano from one of those shots taken from Warren. Stop, 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 stop. 
And you'll hear Mike Stafford, the trainer of the corner of Rashi Warren, sprinting out the time. 15 seconds to go. And now final seconds of the bell. The rematch between Juan Carlos Payano and Rasheed Warren. And Warren jumping up on the ropes, indicating that he won. Payano does the same. We will be back with the decision here in Chicago in a moment. Welcome back. An intense and emotional opening act here in Chicago between Warren and Piano. Let's take a look at the final punch stats presented by Motel 6. Piano landed two more than Warren, but Warren landed the higher percentage, 31% to 18%. Let's go right now to Ray Flores for the decision here in this bantamweight title bout between Piano and Warren. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge at ringside, Nelson Vasquez scores the bout. 114-114, a draw. Overruled by judges Robert Heckel and Steve Weisfeld, who have the bout. 115-113 for your winner by majority decision. And the new... Bantamweight champion, Rashid Baby Pig Warren. He never got that Olympic medal he longed for. But as you see Warren on the canvas with Adrian Broner celebrating, Almost in disbelief, he is going home with a title belt. Marv, BJ. Well, his, his mom called the shot late in the round when Rashi Warren was not at his best. And there is the reaction of his mother, Paulette, with the announcement that the new Bantamweight title holder, the 29-year-old out of Cincinnati, and they know about champions in Cincinnati, Rashi Warren in a majority decision over Juan Carlos Payano. Let's go to Kenny Rice. Kenny. All right, thanks, Marv. I am with the new champ. Rashi, you've got the belt. That's what you've talked about since you turned pro. How does it feel? And all this hard work I've been going through since the Olympics and from the last fight that we had, and I felt like I won the decision. And to get the feeling and feel these belts around my chest, it's still a dream to me right now. So I'm just taking this all in, and I'm bringing it back home to Cincinnati, baby. Cincinnati, we in the building, baby. Baby, big team won. About billions was good. It seemed like most of Cincinnati was here tonight, led by your mother, Paulette. You talked about you regretted not getting a gold medal for her, but you were going to give her that championship belt. I noticed you looked her way to start this 12th round. What were you thinking? I was thinking, you know, it's that time to put it around our waist. What we all been through and what we done did all this year and i just want to thank my family and my fans for standing behind me and never giving up and let everybody know that dreams do come true any doubt when you heard the first decision was a draw you talked about you didn't want it to go to the judges did you worry when you heard that first vote was draw um at first i did but i got to give it to piano he's a hard fighter he fought every round and he put his all on the line just like i did and you know it could be a three you know, he got the first one, I got the second one, and we could do this again. Congratulations, champ. All right, and I want to thank Al Hammond, Warriors, Boston Promotion for putting us together at NBC. Thank you, Cincinnati. Thank you, Chicago. All right, Marv. Thank you, Ken. In Cincinnati with a very strong boxing history, producing Aaron Pryor, as it Charles, Adrian Broner, who was in the ring right behind Rashi Ward, and Rashi's mom, Paulette. An emotional scene between 
mother and son. And just ahead, Erickson Lubin, a super welterweight hot prospect, 14 and 0, 10 by knockout, going up against Daniel Sandoval out of Mexico, 38 and 3, 34 by KO. That is moments away here on NBC.